pray for him because he's, he's having a rough time. Uh, Floyd Helms and Floyd Cockrell and Johnny Stevens, he had surgery and he's doing good. And Glenn's son, I don't know about him. Anybody want to add any more or take some off? Carry my thing again. Carry no, you. It's okay. I want to uh, ask that everybody pray for my son, Carry Yoko, and he's having a hard time right now. Okay. Anyone else? Well, it's good to see each one of you out, and, and uh, I thank the Lord that He still hears and answers prayers. And uh, uh, it's very important that we pray for those that asked us to pray for them. And there's a lot of folks that we don't even know that needs our prayers. But God knows their needs. So, and it's good to be back in Mountain View. I was only gone three days and it seemed like three months. <laughs> and uh, so I'm glad to be here today. Glad to see you today. Again. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer and just lay these uh, that's been requested in His hands because He can take care of them. Heavenly Father God, as we bow here this morning, so thankful, Lord, for another beautiful day that you give us. We thank you, Lord, this morning that the prayers has been answered. We thank you for, Lord, that you can go into each home, hospitals, wherever they might be, God, and give them that touch that they stand in need of, God. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for health and strength. Lord, we thank you for your guidance, Lord. We just pray, Lord, this morning, Lord, if we can just look and trust in you. Bless those, Father, this in the storm, Lord, we pray that you can keep them safe. Lord, I ask you now to just go with us through the main of this service here today. God, be in everything that be said and done, Lord, that your name will become one get glory out of it. Lord, we pray that you'll save the lost, revive your children worldwide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> G. Where? G. G. George. George. Number 76. There you go. Ah. You didn't have G out. She should. She should. No. How do you know that G? It ain't wrote on it. I told you. It'll say it, though. When I play it, it's going to say G. <laughs> Y'all ready? I'm a home prepared where the saints are by.
right.
brasileiros. Southern Baptist Church 
and uh, and we got a young young twentyish uh, music master out of college, and uh, he's been introducing a lot of this uh, praise music to the congregation, and us seniors like these old ones. So in our Sunday school class, they voted and said. We're going to sing these old ones during the Sunday school class. So, <laughs> so I had to start working some of them up. And they've been a joy. You want to read a few verses of Scripture? We, we, uh, we're about out of time already, but we, got, <laughs> we, we might have to borrow just a little bit. <laughs> but we've enjoyed the, the service this far. We enjoyed the singing. We appreciate the singers and musicians that come this way. We just thank the Lord for all of you. We all got a part. All had a part. And when we do our part, that's all the Lord expects of us. So, you got your Bibles turned with us in the book of Revelation. It's in the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation. We'll read just a few verses there. Then, uh, we'll be going somewhere else if the Lord leads us. 12th chapter and the 10th verse of Revelation. You know, they sung a song this morning about being set free. Ain't you glad you're free this morning? Amen. Ain't, you, ain't you glad you're not bound down to Satan anymore? Amen. 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 Satan rules our life up until the Lord comes into our life. And, uh, you know, even in the Bible we can read. We was reading up there in the book of Matthew. Uh, don't turn there because we don't got But uh, this thought come to my mind. In, in Matthew 27, where there was innocent blood shed there for sin. You know, Pilate said there, he said, he took water and washed his hand. And, and he said, I'm innocent of this. Folks, there wasn't none of us innocent until that blood was shed on, on the cross of Calvary. But I thank God today that, uh, that, that he, he made a way on the cross. All right, in the 10th verse, in the 12th chapter of Revelation, the Bible said, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of, of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcome Him by the blood of the Lamb. Heavenly Father, God, as we bow the thank you again for this opportunity, Lord, this morning to, to stand for you one more time, God, as if it be the last time we'll be able to stand. God, I thank you for Jesus who loved us enough, Lord, that he went and paid our sin debt that we couldn't pay. Thank you this morning, most of all, for salvation. God, take us and use us here for a few minutes that you might get glory. Whatever is accomplished, Lord, we want to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. But I want verse stuck to me. And they overcame him. Now this speaking of Satan, he was cast out. He was cast down. Him and his fathers, his angels, followed him. Now it's uh, it's hard to believe that the angels uh, in heaven was not what God wanted them to be. Neither can I comprehend until the Lord give me uh, knowledge to comprehend why that Jesus would choose Judas for disciple. Let me tell you something. When when, when God, before God ever made man on this earth, He made a plan for him. God knew everything that would happen. God knew the
those that would accept him and those that wouldn't accept him. But today, I'm so glad uh, that we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Now, there's something happened over the years. They want to do away with the blood. Bible said it without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for our sin. Ain't you glad today that, amen, that Jesus Christ was willing to go to that cross, amen, and they put that crown of thorns on His head. Ain't you glad that He, he suffered pain and agony because of you and I, because our sins, because where we'd go if it wasn't for Him doing that. Boy, yes, they put a crown of thorns on His head. You ever had a thorn and you, you know that they hurt? Amen. You know, my friend, they, they went and pierced His side and the Bible said, out come water and blood. That blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, it wasn't, it wasn't spilt just because, my friend, today, amen, that they pierced His side. God had a plan for you and me. God's got a plan for us. All we got to do is accept that plan. The Bible said they overcome Him by the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. I tell you folks today that, that people out here today, as I sat down in the hospital uh, waiting room the other day, I hear things, my friend, that my Bible don't say by how people is being deceived. I heard my little nephew, they told him to be sure to be at church a certain day that they were all going to get saved again. My friend, today, people is being misled. But they overcome that by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Hey, we can't do it on our own. There, there's no way that we can, hey man, escape. He said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great of salvation? We can't do it, my friend, today. It took salvation. And when Jesus said it was finished John, on the cross, that old, when that old veil was read from the top to the bottom, my friend, that meant that I could come. And he said, Whosoever will come, let him drink of the water of life freely. Now, if I'd have had to pay a big price, I couldn't have had salvation. But I'll assure you today, if people could buy salvation and pay it out in payments the rest of their life, a lot of people would do that. But it's free and they won't accept it. Amen. They won't accept the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. All sin, my friend, it don't clean us in our sins, it cleans us from our sins. Amen. And we can come pure and holy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We, we try to learn a song that this old house looks the same. My house is just a cabin. My clothes are ragged and worn. But I want you to know when, when, when I knelt on that altar, I went down a beggar, but I came up a millionaire. I don't have a lot of money, but I tell you, I have Jesus. I have the same Jesus that they're talking about here in Revelations. Now you can go and you can study in this and Amen. It'll it'll carry you a long way. But I was looking in the the, the scriptures there where where it said uh, if I can turn to it right quick. I was looking in the scriptures in in uh, the book of uh, uh, Matthew, I believe it was the book of Matthew. Let me see if I can turn to it right here. No, the book of St. John. Where Jesus was speaking here, He said, He said, I am the bread of life. In the 6th chapter of the book of St. John. He said, I am the bread of life. The bread 
And he said, Moses give you not that bread. Moses eat of that bread. The people eat of that bread and they died. But if you eat of this bread, you'll live forever. You think about that this morning. Living forever. I'm not going to be like some of them says. I'm not going to be like a dog that's died and buried and that's all they are to it. My friend, there's going to be a resurrection one day after a while. Jesus was re resurrected the third day after that they crucified Him. And when Jesus Christ comes back, then those will be resurrected from the grave. Those that's prepared their self, that's, that's live for God, amen, their, their spirit is going to be united with a glorified body. Well, I think about that. I wonder how that this inward man is going to feel when he gets in a glorified body. Then I believe I can shout and I can praise God with a brand new body. You know, the Bible said that flesh and blood shall not enter into the kingdom of God. But I want you to know, my friend, that this uh, that enters into God will be the same one that, that uh, Ecclesiastes said will go back to God from which it come. When we got saved, when we got born uh, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, then we become a new creature, new creation in Christ Jesus. Somebody tells me along the way, well, it ain't nothing that you can feel. My friend, I want you to know today, I can feel it. If I couldn't feel it, I wouldn't know I had it. And if I didn't, if I didn't know I had it, then I could lose it and wouldn't know I lost it. But praise God, I'm glad today that I'm not like an animal that'll be, that'll die and be buried and and go away and that's all that will happen. But I want you to know, my friend today, we have something to look forward for. The, the worst ain't yet to come. The best is yet to come. Amen. The best is when Jesus comes back and takes us home to be with Him. How was, did this happen? Friend, it's when He when he uh, went on on Calvary's cross, and they laid him and they nailed the nails in his hands and in his feet. That blood that was shed, there was a little drop of it for me. There was a little for you, and there was a little for everyone that would accept that. Friend, we living in a world where they. They've done took the blood out of our hymnal books. They taken that blood out of. They taken Jesus Christ out of everything. But He said here in His Word. Notice what He said. He said this in the fifty-eighth verse. He said, "This is that bread which came down from heaven, not according to your fathers did eat manna and." and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. You tell me how long is ever. There ain't no end to it. Somebody told me the other day, he said, well, heaven told me where heaven was going to be and amen how many was going to be there. I don't believe that. My friend, they can't make me believe that there's going to be 144,000 in, in heaven. Whether there'll be more than that, but there'll be more in hell that's in heaven. Why? Because they choose. They choose that. They don't choose God as their Savior. The, the, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible said, cleanses us. It, it cleanses us on the inside that we don't have that uh, that desire to want to do those evil things that we used to do. Somebody has told me before 
I don't feel any different on the inside. Well, if we don't feel any different, then there's not any difference. We still the same as we was before Jesus shed His blood on Calvary's cross. We still the same today. But I want you to notice here, Jesus said here in the 55th verse, He said, My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. You see, he dwells in us, and if, and, and, and if he dwells in us, then we dwell in him because the Father has given him. He's laid all of this in the hands of Jesus. Jesus said uh, in his word, he said, Thou art mine, and no one is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Oh, I realize that we've got denominations that will say that's not true. Well, they argue with the Bible because I believe the Bible is true. Amen. And if we uh, compromise the Word of God, amen, we better get out from behind the pulpit, close our Bible, and go home and never go back to it anymore. Folks, I'd rather, I'd rather God strike me down as to mislead anybody. Tell somebody that there's another way. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man can come to the Father except by me. And if we don't know Jesus Christ, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from part of our sins. No, that's not what he said. Friend, he cleans us from all from, from all our sins. Uh, now, I could go on over in Little John and and, and uh, there there'd be some scriptures here that would tell you that what I'm preaching to you about, notice what he said here, way down here in the 63rd verse. He said, It is a spirit that quickeneth the flesh. Now, I want you to know today, my friend, it's not by words, lest any man should boast. People's boasting about what they're doing and failing to tell people what God is doing. God is working today. God is still here and answering prayers. When we get on our face and call out to God, amen, for one another, God will hear that prayer. Sometimes God answers it the way we ask and sometimes He asks it. He answers it the way He wants it to be. But we still praise Him today for that. You know, the, the, the Bible tells us that when Jesus said it was finished on the cross, what did that mean? His work was finished here on this earth. It was finished. Not that He was dead forever. Uh, he was dead, but He's alive forevermore. The Bible said that He gave up the ghost. And little John tells us that when we speak of ourselves, we're speaking of the outward man that is going to perish. The inward man uh, is a seed that's planted by Jesus Christ. And, and that, that left, you notice he said, I and you and you and me. How can it sin, amen, if it's Jesus that lives, dwells within us? Folks are getting the flesh and the Spirit mixed up today. They're getting confused. My friend, that ain't anything to get confused about. It's real today. That same Jesus over in Revelations, where it talks about in the tribulations, this same Jesus is talking to us here in John chapter 6. 
and in Matthew 27, that same Jesus. You see, there ain't no beginning and you can't find the name to Him. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And them three dwells together. Ain't you glad that you that you know that, that you that Jesus gave you that when you cried out to Him, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Brother Lord, I ain't never had to repent. Well, you're still lost. If you ain't repented, you're still lost because unless we repent, we are all likewise perish. If we hadn't received Jesus Christ into our heart, then we need Him. We need Him in our heart. Oh, I tell you this morning, I feel something deep in my soul today that I know that's real. I feel something that's that, that wasn't there before Jesus entered in. Because when the when the when the, the new man, when Jesus moves in, the old man has to move out. The old man is that old crook. It has to move out. It don't move over. I know a lot of folks is trying to, to live with both of them, but you can't do that. We have to choose. God won't dwell in an unclean vessel. Heavenly Father, God, as we bow, we thank you again for this message you can spread on our heart. Dear God, I thank you this morning, Lord, for these precious people that's come out, Lord, and Expect this morning a blessing from you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you've blessed every heart that's in here this morning, Lord. We pray, God, that, that, that you obey in the, the, the call uh, where you know, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you labor heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Lord, if we have a song this morning, Lord, we pray that we'll search our hearts, God, and if there's anything that's not pleasing to you. Lord, we'll bow and, and, and ask you for forgiveness here today. Dear Lord, we pray now that you'll bless the sons and say, Come. This is one time that God didn't change my message. But you know, I knew before I, before I got here this morning that I was going to be blessed by God. I knew that I could praise Him this morning because He's real. He's real in my heart, this old songwriter said. And as they do this number this morning, Let's pray. If there's anything that's contrary in our heart, in our home, places of our work, that God will move it out as far as the east is from the west. What would this stand this morning? This one is in the hymn of uh, Precious Lord, take my hand. <laughs> Lord, take my hand. We might, uh, just kind of, Nora gives me a signal, says, uh, do a song at the end, you know, so I'm sitting there trying to think what to do while Brother Lord's preaching, and it's hard to uh, do, it's hard for me to do two things at once, but uh, I come up with this song, I thought, uh, well, you know, this is kind of, Lord, take my hand, and uh, as we go, as we leave this place and go through the week, I think that ought to be our prayer. Just, uh, Lord, take my hand. Yeah. In the key of hell. Precious Lord, take my hand.
Amen. 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 Amen.